In just 12 minutes, uncover 10 eye-opening takeaways from Sean Ryan's explosive talk with Rainmaker CEO Augustus DeRico on the secret war to control your water, China's weather dominance, chemtrail myths, Vietnam rain warfare, and the truth about cloud seeding. Takeaway 1. The secret war to control your water. Augustus Dorico believes we are living through a quiet but powerful global war over water. He says that in the near future, control over water will become more important than oil, data, or shipping routes. This war is not fought with guns or missiles, but with drones, radars, and weather manipulation. Augustus explains that China is already years ahead of other countries in using weather as a tool for power. By using advanced cloud seeding and rainmaking technology, China is helping other countries grow food, fill their dams, and even green their deserts. This gives them influence over nations without firing a single shot. He calls it soft power, but it has real consequences. He also warns that America is falling behind. While China has over 30,000 people working in weather modification, the U.S. has almost no federal program, and innovators like Augustus are left to figure it out on their own. If the U.S. doesn't catch up, it could lose control over something as basic and vital as its water supply. For example, China has helped Thailand create a government department focused entirely on rainmaking, while America still has no central body for weather control. Augustus warns that if you can control the weather in another country, you can control their food, their economy, and their politics too. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway two, China is far ahead in weather control. According to Augustus Dorico, China is the global leader in weather modification by a massive margin. They've invested hundreds of millions of dollars, have a dedicated agency called the Chinese Meteorological Administration, and run large-scale weather programs in every province. Augustus says that more than 10% of the water in China's biggest dam is now made from man-made rain. They are not just using basic tech. They're deploying military-grade drones and inventing their own cloud seeding materials that are far more efficient than what the U.S. uses today. What makes this even more serious is that China is exporting this technology to other nations, quietly gaining control over their water supply. This isn't science fiction. It's already happening. Augustus says this is one of the smartest and scariest moves China has made because it doesn't look like war, but it gives them power like one. For example, they're now working on large projects to make parts of Inner Mongolia green by creating rain and planting forests. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway three, America did modify weather in Vietnam. This may shock people, but Augustus Dorico and Sean Ryan discuss how the United States already used weather modification as a weapon during the Vietnam War. The program was called Operation Popeye. Its goal was to increase rain over the Ho Chi Minh Trail to slow down enemy troops and supplies. Soldiers on the ground confirmed that it worked. The U.S. extended the monsoon season and made enemy movement harder. But for years, the government denied the program even existed. Only after a journalist exposed it did officials finally admit it was true. This secrecy has caused lasting damage. People stop trusting the government, and even today, that distrust feeds conspiracy theories. The backlash from Operation Popeye led to an international treaty that banned using weather modification for war. Augustus believes that even though the science behind it was real, the lies and cover-ups made it harder for honest innovation to grow. For example, today's cloud seeding companies must constantly fight against the belief that they're doing something shady or harmful even when their work is legal and safe. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway four, government regulations are way behind. One of the biggest problems in the United States, according to Augustus Dorico, is that cloud seeding and weather modification are almost completely unregulated at the federal level. That means no real rules, no enforcement, and no agency in charge of making sure it's done safely and openly. Most of the regulation happens at the state level. Western states like Utah and Colorado have some rules. Companies must get permits and stop operations if there's a flood or avalanche risk. But even those systems are inconsistent. At the national level, the only real requirement is to inform NOAA, which is a federal agency that records weather data. But as Augustus puts it, you can tell them anything and it doesn't really matter. This creates a lot of confusion and fear. Many people call the government asking if someone is poisoning their air or water. Augustus believes that without clear and honest rules, public trust will continue to fall. 
For example, some states like Florida and Tennessee have now passed bans on cloud seeding due to public pressure and misinformation, even though the tech has been proven safe. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway five, misconceptions about chemtrails hurt progress. Many people hear about weather modification and immediately think of chemtrails, which are the white streaks planes leave behind in the sky. Augustus Dorico explains that these are just regular condensation trails made from jet engine vapor, not chemicals. But because of past government lies, conspiracy theories have filled in the blanks. People now think companies like Rainmaker are secretly spraying chemicals to control mines, poison water, or change the climate in harmful ways. This couldn't be further from the truth. Augustus says that real cloud seeding only works on clouds that already have water in them. It can't create clouds out of nothing, and it can't be done from passenger planes. For example, some people have even emailed him claiming they can make it rain by chanting certain words. While those stories may sound funny, they show just how confused the public is about the science. These misconceptions have become a real problem, blocking smart solutions to real issues like drought and water shortages. We're halfway through the video. Thanks for sticking with us. If you're enjoying it, hit the thumbs up and share it in your WhatsApp groups. If you'd like to support us, please tap the thanks button below. It helps us keep making great content. Drop a comment and don't forget to hit subscribe for more. Now let's continue with the video. Takeaway six, cloud seeding is not science fiction. Cloud seeding is a real tested method to increase rain or snow from clouds that already exist. Augustus Dorico explains that this technique was invented in 1946 in the United States. It works by identifying large wet clouds and sending drones into them to release tiny particles like silver iodide. These particles give the water in the clouds something to stick to, so they freeze and fall to the ground as rain or snow. Augustus says that depending on the weather, this can start working in just 15 to 45 minutes. Rainmaker, his company, uses custom-built drones that can fly in freezing temperatures and tough weather. These drones are much cheaper and more flexible than planes, and they don't put people at risk. For example, they've already used them in Utah and Nevada to increase snowfall in the mountains, which helps with water supply in the spring and summer. The technology may sound futuristic, but it's already saving water and helping farmers today. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway seven. Cloud seeding is measurable and safe. Augustus Dorico points out that a big breakthrough came in 2017 when radar scientists were finally able to measure the impact of cloud seeding. Using something called dual polarization radar, they showed that cloud seeding actually added measurable rain and snow to the ground. This removed the guesswork and gave scientific proof that the process works. On the safety side, cloud seeding materials have been tested for decades. The main chemical, silver iodide, is far less toxic than everyday things like aspirin. After years of cloud seeding, soil tests in states like Colorado and Utah showed almost no trace of dangerous buildup. In fact, Augustus said you'd get more silver in your body by eating a salad grown near a cloud seeding site than from the seeding itself. This shows that when done responsibly, cloud seeding can be both effective and safe. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway 8. Augustus Dorico dropped out to build tech. Augustus Dorico's journey to becoming a weather engineer didn't start in a lab. He went to UC Berkeley to study physics, but dropped out after realizing he could solve real-world problems faster outside the classroom. During the COVID pandemic, he moved to Texas, where he worked as a personal trainer and later joined a tech startup that helped farmers manage groundwater usage. This gave him direct experience with the water crisis in the Western US. His project caught the attention of major players in the water and farming industry, and he later received a Thiel Fellowship to pursue his work full-time. Augustus explains that real innovation doesn't come from sitting in lecture halls. For example, while most of his college classmates were studying theory, he was out in the field solving drought problems with sensors and code. That experience gave him the knowledge and motivation to build Rainmaker. Now let's move to the next takeaway. Takeaway 9 environmental concerns must be addressed. Even though cloud seeding has proven benefits, Augustus Dorico stresses that it must be used carefully. If you try to increase rainfall in an area that's already at risk of floods, you could make things worse. Some states have rules that force companies to stop seeding if the snowpack gets too deep or if there's danger of a flood. 
Augustus thinks there should be similar rules at the national level to make sure the technology is used responsibly. Another big issue is the question of who owns the clouds. If California increases rainfall using cloud seeding and Arizona gets less water as a result, who's responsible? Right now, there are no clear laws about this, but Augustus believes legal battles over cloud water rights will start in the next few years. For example, one county might sue another for stealing their rain, even if it was unintentional. That's why we need clear guidelines and open communication about where, when, and how cloud seeding is done. Now let's move to the last takeaway. Takeaway 10. Terraforming deserts is no longer a dream. At the end of the podcast, Augustus DeRico shares his big dream to green the deserts of the world and turn them into places where crops can grow. He explains that desert soil can be made fertile by adding special materials like manure, biochar, or hydrogels that help it hold water. After cloud seeding makes it rain or snow, these materials help keep the water in the ground long enough for plants to grow. He calls this process terraforming and says it's already starting in places like Arizona. For example, parts of Arizona have soil similar to California's Central Valley, which is one of the most productive farming areas in the world. With enough water and soil treatment, these dry areas could feed millions of people. Augustus believes that by combining weather tech, smart farming, and soil engineering, we can reverse desertification and build a greener, more abundant future. Here is a brief introduction about Augustus Dorico. Augustus Dorico is the founder and CEO of Rainmaker, a company that creates rain and snow using drones and weather technology. He is a Thiel Fellow and UC Berkeley dropout focused on reversing drought and transforming deserts into green, farmable land. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, hit the thanks button below. It really helps us keep going. If you enjoyed this summary, please leave a like and share it in your WhatsApp groups. To join discussion about this video, drop a comment below. And for more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below.